put all those things in an increasing order like this. What is an increasing order? You put the it's not increasing order for each and everything. You put the frequency of it. OK, first. Of all, so how many items for this? These many items for there. And you put the frequency of all those things. One, two, three like that. OK, based on whatever the frequency it was there right here. It was put right here. Then what we did, we put all those things in form of decreasing order. But before we put that into decreasing order, we did one more thing. What is that one more thing? We saw what was the minimum support. The minimum support was equal to three. OK, so because the minimum support was equal to three, we selected only those which had a minimum support of three or more than three. The frequency which is three or more than three. OK, only those we selected and we put them everything in descending order of their respective frequencies. So that's what we did. If we did that, this is what we got. OK, we got this pattern. This pattern becomes very important for the entire till the end of a problem. OK, what is the problem? So what is the pattern we got? We got this pattern Okay, in decreasing order. K E M O Y. OK, K E M O Y was the pattern that we got along with the frequencies everything. The next thing is we took this original problem. We took this original items, transactions, everything and then we figure out only those which are frequent patterns. OK, so we figure out only those which are frequent pattern, whether it is there or not. If it is there, we kept it. If it is not there, we removed it. OK, so that's if you do it. See, this was the original items. Then if we took only the ordered item set, which is with regard to this frequent pattern, this is what we got. KEMOY, you can see everything is there in this. All five KEMOY is there in this, so we have kept all those things. The next thing is we took this order item set here. We check for K E M O Y. There is only K E O Y. M is not there. The next one K E M. OK, the O Y is not there. Then next again K M Y. Here it is O is not there. OK, so that's those things you got to keep in mind. And the next one, fifth one. OK, you got what's the next thing K E O. So what is the next thing you got everything? With the fifth one, you got KEO. So you got all these ordered item sets. OK, all these ordered item sets. So what is my next challenge? My next challenge is to figure out for each and everything I draw a diagram. OK, I draw a diagram. So what is it? Inserting entire KEMOY. I'm talking about the first one here. KEMOY. OK, if I'm trying to insert it, this is what I get. The tree. First, you start with a null root null root OK, you start with a null root and then what you do? You keep on moving ahead. OK, you keep on moving ahead with regard to it. So K E M O Y then K E O Y. So you can see this. See if it is directly connected, you don't have to worry. K E O Y see K increment now it become two. E incremented two. see but O is there here, but O you can see very clearly from E to O. There is no direction. They are clearly saying from E to O, but there is no direct connection. So what do you do? You put an extra node for O. OK, how do you do it? You do it like this. You put an extra node for O. You put an extra node for Y just to make sure that. OK.
there's i think some sort of a problem with your to internet today so hopefully you guys can sort of manage okay hopefully it's working now yeah see next thing is with regard to kmy if i'm talking about kmy see i need to increment with this this k will become 4 m i need to increment so but between k and m there is a e coming in i need to you know i cannot go from k to m directly so what i do i put extra node for m okay extra node from m then from k to m there will be a direct contact like this okay same with regard to y i can't go directly from m to y see m to y is not at all possible so i put one more extra node for y so that i can go from m to y okay this is very very important part very very important part when i do that so this is what you get okay from m c i'm putting it right there and from y also i'm putting extra node now i can very clearly go from k then m then y okay look into this from k then to m then to y k m y very clear okay without any problem these paths will become at the end it will become very important okay that you got to keep in mind okay so let's go for the next one okay then the last part is k e o so if i'm inserting k e o how do you think it will be so you can start with here again k e where is o o i can write it here okay but you can very clearly see that from k to e then from o there is a direct contact here there is already a direct contact for k e o how do you make out for a direct contact between k e o very simple k is here e is here and o directly coming through right here okay it's coming directly without any problem so you can easily increment okay you can easily increment k which will become 5 e increment it will become 4 k e o already there is a path so k e o o can be incremented for 2 okay very very important for you to know so what is the next part okay see all those things is all done k e o everything is all done now what is the next thing conditional pattern base the next thing is all about conditional pattern base is computed for path labels how do you think that is done okay first you take the entire path k e m o okay what is this k e m o all those things very simple take from below right from here y okay take from below so right from y okay take all the paths that are possible see the first path what is the first path from here right this is the first path i'm talking about here this is the first path what is the path you have got here this wherever you see the arrows that needs to be taken into consideration k e m o y okay because you are taking only for y k e m o that's one path then you take one more path this one what it will become k e o then you take one more path for this one what do you think it will become k m that's all only k and m three paths you get are uh, with regard to y and that's what is written very clearly here k e see this k e m o and what is our you know the value of y here one that value is coming right here what is the value of you know this one k e o okay k e o what is the value of y one then here value of y okay k and m what is the value of y one so y is all done then do the same thing with regard to y, o okay what do you think will be happening with regard to o k e m one k e m one then for here k e 2 okay so two things should be coming for o check it k e m 1 k e 2 okay then with regard to m again m with regard to see this k e 2 and where is m again there is one m here k that's all five there is anything else more yet no okay you can see the same thing k e sorry not five m value is 1 na so k e 2 k and 1 then the next one is this one with regard to e there is only one place that is possible k 5 e is equal to 4 so you can see very clearly k 4 okay so this entire thing is all done okay this is entire thing is all done now the next part conditional frequent item tree this is with regard to conditional pattern base okay now what's the next thing next thing is you need to build what is known as conditional frequent pattern tree 
Okay, how do you think that will be? That will be built based on this. Okay, what is the way of doing it? Okay, I'm see, I'm just taking from here. This items conditional pattern based. I'm taking right here items conditional pattern based. I'm taking this entire table right here. Okay, then I am adding this column. What is the column I am adding? Okay, this is to figure out what is the most common thing that you have in all these things. That's all, nothing more. What is the most common thing that you have in this? So what is the common thing that you have? Okay, look into this. Okay, K, E, K, E, O, all those things. In this, what is the only element that is common? Now people may be thinking, what about K, E? No, you see only the first row. Look into only the first row aspect of it. You see, see the first row, K, E, K, E. For the next thing, there is no K, E here. So you can't take K, E as common. No, no, no. The only thing that is common is K, K, K. How many times it's coming? Three. Next one. In this second row, you check. K, E, K, E. Two things are the common. K, E, K, E. Both are common. M is not common. So K, E, you can write up to what? Two times. Not two times, three times. Okay. You have one time here and two times here. So two, one plus two, three. Okay. Then again for M, look into this row. K, K. Only K is common. K, E is not there in the second one. So K is common. Two plus one, three. Okay. Then the next one. K is common. Is there anything that is other common? No. And what is the value of that? Four. Okay. Nothing is common. There's only one thing. So that one thing itself is written here. Okay. This is the last part of it. Conditional frequent pattern. Okay. See, this entire thing is written. Then what is the next thing? Be careful with the tables, how they are changing. Okay. So that's what it, and for each and every table, the next table, there's something which we have taken from the previous table. So table values will come. Okay. We are taking something from the previous thing. That's very important. Okay. So if you take this, what are you trying to figure out here? Okay. Again, you are taking the items right here. The items is written. Frequent, what you can see this frequent pattern that is generated here. What is the pattern that is generated? You combine this K with this item. You combine this conditional frequent pattern tree with this item. K, Y, K, E, O, K and M, K and E. Okay. If you do that, what is the thing that you got? You got K, Y, then K, O, E, O, M, O. And how you say this? You can say it like this. See, K and Y, only one combination. Then here, K and O, one combination. E and O, other combination. K, E themselves, one more combination. Okay. See this? K, O, E, O, E, K, O. Sorry, E, K, O. Three combinations together. Okay. With all the values on them. This is something that you get at the last part of it. And this is the association rules that you figure out. Okay. See, K and Y, they are coming together three times or more than three times. Because the support tree is support count with tick was three. So K and Y are coming together. So you can keep K and Y items together. Or you can take and keep K and O together. K E and O together. E K O together. Or when you take from a M perspective, you can keep K and M together. From a E perspective, you can keep E and K together. That is the association rules that you are going to figure out. We are talking about association analysis only. Okay, this is the rules that you can sort of generate. They can, you know, you can keep the items together so that people will have a higher stake of buying these things together. Okay, that is the thing with regard to this APROE algorithm, sorry, not APROE, FP growth algorithm. Okay, now what is the things that you look for in this? Okay, or what is the other example that we can sort of, you know, take out from this? You can see very clearly what was the shortcomings of second. What was the shortcomings of your APROE algorithm that you were supposed to scan everything? Okay, but what about the FP growth algorithm? What do you think is a thing related to it? See, FP growth algorithm is an improvement of your APROE algorithm. Okay, fine. If is used for finding frequent item set in a transaction database without candidate generation. That's very important. You are trying to figure out this without any candidate generation. See, I'll send you all the PPT and all. Don't have to worry, okay? The most important part is you need to know that what and all are the examples that are present in the you know, uh, internet. 
when you say go for an internet i'm taking right from you know the machine learning and also from a data mining perspective okay so what do you think is an advantages of your fp growth algorithm you got it is faster than a proi why because you don't have to scan the database multiple number of times no candidate generation yet am i generating you know except for the first time where i figure out the frequencies of each and everything i'm not doing together you know two things to take two things together they take three things together like that i'm not doing it okay only two passes over data set it's not even two passes one data you know it will be one pass uh, probably they are saying two passes because of the last part okay but what do you think is the disadvantages fp tree may not fit in the memory so memory takes a lot of time i mean it takes a lot of memory okay next thing fp tree is expensive to build if there is more memory it is more expensive okay it is more taking lots of memory means obviously it's taking lots of your money also okay so if you take that as an example or this probably i can see there are many examples that you get okay in exam probably they'll go for a classic example that you know the market basket analysis right that may they'll be going for that okay i'll be putting at least three examples in your ppt okay i'll be sending at least three examples for your ppt for you to understand on then so let's look into this what is the thing that been written okay see i've taken again one second i'll just yeah hopefully it's visible now oh yeah see this this again they have taken three 3% ka matlab 3 okay nothing more some people use it in different different standards that doesn't mean okay it is somewhat different and all it is same only okay see this the minimum let the minimum support so many majority of the times minimum support is assumed only okay it's assumed only now you can see the minimum support we have taken is 3 and you see the item sets okay so many item sets are there and when we figure out the frequency of each and everything this is what we get okay this is what we get but in this what is more important we need to see only those which have a minimum support of 3 so what are the ones that is having the minimum support of 3 a b c f k l no not l m and p so you put out all these things in descending order what do you think will happen see the highest you got is c other one is f c and f okay c and f both are four which is highest so you need to put it in descending order means what is going to happen i'm going to take it like this you can put c also on top not a problem okay you can put c also on top or f below however you can do you can do okay generally they should have gone with you know c because it's a alphabetical see when you have taken a and b which is having a b m p which is all coming 3 3 3 and when you take an alphabetical order here obviously you need to take it alphabetical order here also okay that small mistake which i have done okay but that uh, of course it's not going to you know change the final output of it final answer of it that's the reason okay so once they got everything like this then they figure out you know for these things okay then they figure out for these things what is the thing that you get see only for this f c a m p f c a m p okay only for those things which are frequent you get this f c a m p for the first transaction i'm talking about so only those things we need to take which are frequent so a you know f c a m p will be there all other things will go second one like this third one only f and b will remain see f is frequent p is frequent c b c is frequent b is frequent f c a m p f c a m p that is also frequent that is all coming right here okay that's entire thing the second part of it is fully here okay i think the the next example they have not taken okay i don't know why they have not taken because they want to learn only this much okay anyway let's take one more example okay one more example for us to work up on okay so what is it i have taken the same old example okay see again the threshold frequency is you know they have taken the value of what you can see very clearly minimum support is 3 and these are all the transactions 
Okay, see if possible. Again, it depends to my on my availability of time and all. If possible, I'll be sending you the written notes of all these things. Okay, nine is there to be there. Okay, for I think for one example I have, but if you learn only one example and doesn't serve any purpose. Okay, you need to learn three examples so that you understand the beauty of it. Okay, so you take this example. A minimum support is three. And then you do the into you know what you call taking frequencies of each and everything. This is what you get four, five, four, four, two. Okay, but minimum support is three. So which one will be deleted? Obviously, I five will be deleted. Okay, when you put it in descending order, how do you get it? You get it like this: five, four, four, four. Okay, here they can clearly go on with you know orders. Okay, I two is five, then I one four, I three is four, I four is also four. Then they build an FP tree, okay, using all these steps. These all the steps which you saw. Previous things only what you saw, all these steps only. There's nothing more, okay. They have instead of writing it in form of you know tables, everything they have written in form of statements here. That's not a right way, but they have written like that, okay. And then when they write an example for it, or when they write what you call as uh, a, it's not zooming, okay, fine. So when you write, when you get a Tree for this. This is what they get. Okay, this is what a tree that they got. You start see again. You start with what null. Okay, you start with null. Then i two is equal to five. Then i four. Then they have written even the values also. There's no need to write values. You can just go with the you know only the tree aspect of it. See, they have written all those things like this. Okay, then once you got this entire tree. What is very important? You just have to go figure out the rules of it. The rules of it are the last part of it. Okay, so this is something that you want to keep in mind. Okay, once you get all those things, okay. So this is the conditional pattern base, conditional FP tree, frequent items, pattern generated. Everything is got through like this. Okay, so this are example and one more example. Whatever you saw on top there, okay, and probably one more example. We are going to take, okay. We are going to take. So what you can think, okay. What you can keep in mind. One thing that you can easily keep in mind when it comes to your internals. That's very important because that's going to come, you know, in the next week, right? So there will be very clearly you can easily understand. All you can easily hope for is one a priori algorithm for sure. Okay. So you will have at least have one a priori algorithm for what? 10 marks then next thing is you will be having your fp growth algorithm okay for again for 10 marks how to give you know things whether i'll give uh, an example and then try to solve it or just try to explain fp algorithm with the example we'll see later okay but two things will be there for sure one is an aproi okay and other one is an fp growth algorithm okay Two things that you got to keep in mind. Okay, so two things: a priori, FP. Please keep this in mind. Okay. Next part is obviously we are going into the, the next part of it. Okay, probably in the next session I will out if possible. We'll see one more example of FP growth. By that time, if I you know sort of get through that uh, you know uh, return notes, I don't know where it is. Okay, if I get that return notes, I'll show one example from the return notes aspect of it. Okay, and then we move into the later part of the module three. Okay, the later part of module three will be talking about lots of you know evaluations, all those things. That will take another two classes, I guess, not more than that. Okay, two, yeah, two classes. If you don't take FP growth algorithm once again. Two three classes, then probably we'll 